The DigiShape DWX 52 DCI milling machine is an open technology system with a six bay material disc changer, 15 bay tool changer, ionized air, optimized waste management and simultaneous five axis movement. The DG Shape DWX series mills are all open technology and that means you can choose whichever cam package you want to run your system on. For this example I'm using Millbox which is produced by Sim System. We like it because it's very intuitive but extremely powerful and uses a wizard based system starting at the top right screen working down to the bottom. So let's get into it. So we're going to start a new job. If you have multiple machines they will all be shown here so you can select which one you're going to produce on. You'll also see a tool package listed which is UK. We've created a we've created a tool package that has a combination of coated tools for high durability and uncoated tools um, but it's an open system so if you want to use third-party tools you can and there are many tools available but we're going to use the UK package for this example I'm going to cut wax and it is from a disc so you'll see that the wizard moved down to the second stage now which is importing the STL file now Millbox uh, includes a number of different restoration examples but we're just going to put a crown in so into crowns this is a full molar I get a quick view here but if I click on it I can have a proper look at that design it's also useful because it tells me the um, size of the restoration as well now software doesn't know what that restoration is so you need to tell it it's a full contour crown click on the tick that will now load the STL file up and place it on the disk now don't worry that it's placed it directly in the center of the disk it's just a holding position now you'll see here I can select the thickness of the disk that I'm going to use now usefully it'll remind you up here what the minimum thickness of disk is that you need I'm going to choose 14 mil because I've got that sat next to me now you'll see some numbers across here they indicate if you have some part used disks in your library so there are three part used 14 mil disks already in my library so let's click on that number the names of them are here if I click on it I'll get a graphical view and then it'll show you where it will automatically nest this next restoration and you'll see it's fairly logical we'll just check the other the other discs now I've got a brand new disc out so uh, I'm going to cancel this and I'm just going to click on where it says the size that will add a new disc in click on the tick and you have the option now of adding a name for the disk or it will automatically populate with the type of material thickness and date and now you'll see it's automatically nested so it's moved it to the edge it's also angulated it um, and it's added the supports now if you're happy with that you can go straight through to production but let me just show you something about the supports now they've been placed equal distance apart for um, good support they've also been placed to reduce the amount of undercut or shadow created by the supports on the restoration so let me just show you that on the screen um, I'm going to remove one of the supports and then to add it back in again 
we click on the plus and can you see this line now running around the restoration that's a guideline for you if I put my restoration high well above that line can you see a shadow has emerged below and that's basically saying look the, the crown bulges below I've now got to struggle to try and get between that bulge and the support pin so do yourself a favor bring it down onto the line can you see how that shadow has been reduced and we click on there now we can do the same with the others but quite happy to let them go like that now you've got full control with these arrows if you want to move that restoration within that disc you can move it up or down so obviously with wax we're not worried about multi-shading but if this was multi-shaded zirconia or PMMA you might want to lift that restoration up in that disc now if you go too far there you go you get a you get a first uh, a, a warning to say look you, you're not going to be able to cut the whole thing so let's let's just bring that back down and it's now in the disc okay so the next stage then is to calculate the tool paths this gives you the option of sending the job directly to the mill for it to immediately start milling now what will happen is it will send the first part of the data with a roughing tool and then when the next stage is calculated it will drip feed to the machine our preference is to always calculate the design in full and then send the file to the machine that way so rather than go directly I'm going to click on save toolpath now it's going to ask me because it's a disk changing system it's going to ask me what adapter am I going to use now because of my slight OCD I will go for A click on the tick now based on the fact that it knows that it's a full contour crown it's now calculating what processes are required for this job at this stage you have the option to produce either in 3 plus 2 or 5 axis simultaneous 3 plus 2 basically means that it will simultaneously move up and down which is Z left to right which is X backwards and forwards which is Y and then rotate in A and B uh, to a fixed position and mill five axis simultaneous means it'll move in x y z a and b all at the same time i'm going to choose the same for internal and external and if we've got a design that has some really nice detail we can choose to add the 0.3 millimeter tool for really fine fissure work on the tick so based on my choices it's now going to work out what tools I need so the first numbers here are the locations the tool bays and then we have the product code for the tools for the UK package so in bay 3 we have a 0.6 millimeter diameter ball or 0.3 radius which is what the code is in base 6 we have the 2 millimeter tool base 7 the 1 millimeter tool and finally in base 8 the 0.3 now the UK tool package will always position the tools in the same bays but this is there just to remind you in case you have used a different package for a different job and now it's going to complete the calculation of all the tool paths and the time it takes will depend on the processing power of your PC so it's now completed the calculation and it is telling you where the tool paths are saved under the CNC subfolder now that was just a quick overview nobody is realistically going to be producing crowns one at a time with a machine like this the idea is that you fill your disc with as many STLs as you can for the appropriate material 
and you've got up to six disks to fill. So in terms of productivity, the machine is more than capable to be running all through the night. So in the morning when you come in, everything is ready for you. The V panel is the virtual control panel for the DWX mill. So I'm going to output a file. Here's my job. I can see the date and I can see the time of the calculation. Now before we press output we need to make sure that the machine is ready. So we have our 14 mil wax disc and the correct adapter, adapter A. Place your material in the adapter and then the adapter ring. Now there's two ways you can put this on. My recommendation is shiny side up with the hooks facing this way around. Because what you're going to do, as you tighten this up, it'll pull the hooks in tight to the screw. Can you hear that? So this is a, a torque set ratchet. So it will tighten to exactly the right tension. Now let's put it in the machine. So the scanner is going to read the barcode here. So just make sure that the letter is the correct way around. And place it into an empty slot. The software prompted us for the location of the tools that we're going to use. So you'll see they are numbered by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and onwards. So let's just take a look at one of these tools. This is base 6. This is the 2mm ball tool. Now when you order the tools, they'll come without this collar. So we need to put this collar on. Now obviously that can be placed anywhere on the tool. So we use a setting block. And that allows you to ensure that you're locating the collar within the range of the tool. And all we're looking for is the tip of that tool to be somewhere within this clear window here. And what the machine's going to do, it's going to measure the length of this automatically. Now everything is set, let's press output. The DWX is now scanning the barcodes. As this is the first job of the day, it's going to check every adapter. It's now picking up adapter A. Now the mic will be picking up a lot more noise now because the extraction unit will um, come on automatically with the uh, beginning of the machine moving and also the compressor will need to recharge at certain times. So the first thing that's happened is the spindle has come down, it's touched on the sensor to make sure there is no tool stuck. It's now moved to base 6. It's collected the 2mm tool, which is the roughing tool. It's now going back to the sensor at the back and it's checking the length of that tool. And as you can see, it's started to mill. Now, of course, the 
thickness of discs does vary very slightly. So you'll notice that the first cut actually didn't touch the surface. It just kissed it on that occasion. Now you're beginning to see the swarf come away as it starts to cut in more. And this is real time milling speed. It's rotated the disc now so it can cut from the other side. Notice the direction of flow of the swarf. There is an air blower blowing down onto the tool and then the extraction is pulling the material out of the cavity of the wax. So it's checking to see whether the tool is intact. It's now going to return it to the bay. And it's going to check with the sensor again to make sure the tool has been released correctly. Now it's ready to pick up the one millimetre tool. Again, it needs to check the length of the one millimetre tool. Now we can see the simultaneous five axis movement. Now you can see the 0.6 tool finishing off some of the fine detail. And finally the incredibly small 0.3 tool. Before collecting the adapter, the machine will blow the air across the disc to try and remove as much waste material as possible. Then the adapter is collected and returned to the magazine. And now we can just have a closer look at the results. Built for 24 hour productivity from a wide range of materials, offering an even wider range of applications. The possibilities are endless.